You guys are absolute monsters. We just flew past 8,000 subscribers, so I'm super stoked about today's video. Today, we're gonna be talking about what you can do to your website so that you're making sure that you're sending a signal to Google to rank you for a specific keyword. All right, so, first snowfall of the year. You may have noticed that behind me. It's okay though, because I didn't have to snow blow or snow plow. Although I do have to say that snow plowing with my ATV is pretty fun. Um, it, it, it is kind of enjoyable, except when it's super, super cold out. That's not very fun. Anyways, let's get down to business. The first thing that I want to tell you is that in the last video, we've got an insane amount of feedback. Uh, the like ratio was crazy. You guys were commenting. And um, that really means a lot. That shows me that you guys are liking what I'm talking about and helps keep me on track. You guys have also been commenting and that signals to me uh, what I should be talking about, which is why I'm doing this video today on this specific topic because you guys let me know what you wanna hear about next. So here's what I want you to do. I'm not gonna release the next video in this series until we get 50 likes on this video. So if you wanna see the next video in the series after today, you gotta hit that like button here, and when we get it to 50, I will release the next video. Does that sound like a deal? Also, before we start today's video, if you haven't seen the video prior to this, the one uh, that we did before this about the local SEO ecosystem, you should click right around here somewhere, I'll put a link, and you should check that one out first before jumping into this video. All right, guys, so before we dive into the specifics, I just wanna give you a little bit of inspiration and motivation to uh, inspire you and show you that this stuff really does work. Now this is a, a client that is in another country, so um, that's one thing I want you to know. You can do SEO anywhere you want. Um, so if you're in China and you wanna target the United States, you can do that. Um, if you're working in a different language, like for me, I'm in the United States and this was in an entirely different language that I do not speak, you can still do it. The same principles still apply, you just have to do a little bit of legwork to translate. And if you're using Google Chrome, they make it pretty easy. They have a translation that pops up automatically when you visit a foreign website. They have, if you Google something in a foreign language, um, you can get a, a, a translation. You can do like that language to English and it will translate for you so that you can still do all of the work that you need to do. And you can also rely on the client to help you a lot with that stuff as well, which is what I usually do. I usually ask the client, you know, does this sound good? Is this how it would be worded? And they'll tell you. So. What I've done here, what you're looking at is an email that I just received three days ago. This is a client that I've had with me for a very, very long time, um, probably like a year and a half now. This specific client, I bill $500 every single month right now for maintenance to keep their ranking going. Um, and you can charge more than that. You can charge less than that. I really wouldn't go less than that though. That's pretty much my uh, lowest minimum price to work with someone. Um, but that's the deal I worked out with this client because as you can see there, they've got more work for me. So I do, um, I do good work for them and then they refer me to other projects that they're working on. So this particular client owns multiple businesses. So I gave them a pretty good deal. So they say, um, well, I say to them, where are you seeing your ranking show up now? Should I start working on the cleaning service now? So basically what was happening is I wanted to know where they were showing up. Um, we we're doing some monthly maintenance and I wanted to boost them higher up in the position that they already were. And again, because this is a foreign SEO ranking, I needed to make sure that uh, what I was doing was showing up for them. Because with foreign SEO, you have to uh, sometimes, if it shows up for you, doesn't mean it's gonna show up for them in their country. So you could either check that by uh, just asking them, which is what I've done, or you could go and you could um, use like a, uh, hide my ass or like a VPN service where it'll actually let you use a proxy and Google it from that specific country or city. But um, it's just easier for me to just ask them. So that's what I did here. So you can see their reply here is, I do not know what you've done, but we are at the top. Smiley face, thank, thanks to you for that. And uh, they put a picture here, I'll pull it up for you. So they put a picture and said Bravo, showing their number one ranking. Now, not only are they ranking there, but they're also ranking organically underneath that as well. So not just in the map pack, but also below it. I just want to, again, to motivate you and inspire you that this stuff is really, really killer. It really works and you want to take action on this stuff. So, so now we're going to dive into some more logistics of how to pull this all off. 
All right, so my goal for this video is to break down the logistics of how you do on-page optimization for your actual pages. And uh, this is after you already have your keyword picked out, if you know how to pick out a keyword. If you don't know how to pick out a keyword, we'll cover that probably in the next video. Um, of course, I will use your comments to help me uh, judge what the next video should be and help guide me. I really appreciated all your comments on the last one, so be sure to comment below. And by the way, um, I'm using my blog as an example of how I g would go and optimize an article uh, for a local site or for any site for that matter. Um, and if you are not signed up to my email list, if you came to this video via YouTube, you should visit the link in my description and sign up for my email list because I do exclusive content for my email list and I do exclusive content for my YouTube channel. So the best way to leverage both of those uh, pieces of content is to simply be subscribed to my email list and be subscribed to my YouTube channel as well. So you're essentially double dipping. So for those of you who came here on YouTube, go visit that link in the description and sign up for my email list. If you're already on my email list and you came to this video from my email list, then you should go and subscribe to me on YouTube, hitting that subscribe button below. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is an H1 tag. So my keyword for this specific article is local SEO 2016. So what you're going to notice is throughout my entire article here, what I've basically done is I've taken a transcript of my last video that uh, we did. And I've basically broke it down into a transcript and put it throughout here. But you're gonna see variations of local SEO 2016 sprinkled throughout. They're gonna be slightly different variations because we're doing this because we do not want it to look spammy. So I have different variations where it says like local SEO for 2016 or local SEO in 2016. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a pattern that Google can easily recognize. So the first thing we're gonna to do to create that pattern um, is we're going to place our keyword inside of an H1 tag. We're gonna wrap it in that. And with WordPress, it's really easy. Um, all you have to do is put your keyword into your article's title, into your WordPress title right here. So as long as my keyword is in here, it's going to be wrapped in an H1 tag. And I'm gonna hit publish on this article so that I can show you what this actually looks like. Okay, so this is the actual H1 tag right here. If we click, right click and hit view page source, Okay, this is how Google actually views the site. So when they're going through a site, they have these spiders and these bots that go through and they just kind of scrape the site. They don't see it all looking really good like we do. They just see this all this bunch of code. So they're going to go through the code and they're going to look at these tags that I'm mentioning to you throughout this video. And, and this particular tag is called an H1 tag. Okay, and what they're going to do is they're going to go through it and they're going to see what is wrapped around, like what is wrapped inside of this tag. And they're going to see local SEO for 2016. So that's going to give one signal back to them that, oh, this could be about uh, local SEO 2016. So the next thing you want to do is, is structure your permalink properly. Um, and what I mean by that is in WordPress, you're able to go and change the permalink by hitting this edit button here and putting your permalink inside of there. Now you can't include spaces. What will happen is if you put spaces, which you can do, um, it's just going to, when you hit OK, it's going to uh, space to them by putting hyphens in between and that's essentially what you want so you want your keyword exact in there with hyphens and what that's going to do is that's going to give you an seo friendly permalink so now google's seeing my keyword in here a variation of it in my h1 tag and they're also seeing it in my permalink now if you don't have your permalink set up properly you can do that by going to settings and by going to the reading settings and choosing what's called the post name permalink structure all right so let's get into the actual article so what I like to do is I like to put a variation of my keyword in the very first paragraph of my article. Now your article should always be about 500 words, um, between three and 500 words. My article here is 841. Quite honestly, the longer the better usually as long as it's really good content. So I feel like my article is very, very good content. Again, I just kind of went in and did kind of a transcript of my video. So it was very easy for me to do this content, but you can always outsource that as long as you're doing it with a good outsourcer and you're spending time to make sure you go through and make sure things are grammatically correct. And again, if, if it's good content, that's going to ultimately trump everything else that you do. So here it is. My keyword is right here. In this vlog, I decided to break down what it takes to do local SEO in 2016. So I'm going to take that first variation of the keyword and I'm going to do a bold tag. Okay. So I'm doing another pattern here and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, all right, let's go through the article again. 
Uh, here's here's a variation that says local SEO. Uh, here's another one that says 2016 for local SEO. So let's do that. So again, read through it. This doesn't sound spammy at all. Some other on-page factors you might want to consider, which is currently helping in 2016 for local SEO, is schema markup. Right? It, it sounds good. It reads naturally. My keyword is there. Um, for this variation, I'm going to italicize it. And then throughout the article, you know, if it fits in naturally, whatever. But I like to usually include somewhere at the end paragraph um, as well, put my keyword. And I did that right here. It's 2016 local SEO. So it's, it's reversed. Um, and what I'm going to do with that one is I'm going to underline it. So if you read that sentence again, it does not sound spammy at all. It said, this is what I consider the 2016 local SEO ecosystem where everything fits together in one, with one another in perfect harmony, right? It all sounds very good and very natural. And then there's one last thing that I like to do with on-page SEO when I'm, when I'm trying to perfectly optimize it. And I like to include an image with my keyword inside of the alt text. And I'll explain to you what that means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put my cursor here. This is where I want the image. Actually, I'm going to put it right here. I want the image right here before my last paragraph. And I'm going to hit Add Media. All right, and I've uploaded my image. And what I'm going to do is for the alt text here, I'm going to put local SEO 2016. For the title, I might do a variation of that. How to do local SEO in 2016. OK, but the most important part is this alt text spot right here. You want this to have the variation um, or no variation. You want it to be the exact keyword um, that you're trying to rank for in that alt text. So um, there we go. I'm going to insert that into the post. So there we go. My post is officially done. I'm going to update this and then we're going to go back and look at the source code again. So again, to look at the source code, you're going to right click and you're going to hit view page source. Okay. So let's look for these patterns here. Okay. So number one is the H1 tag. Here it is. You can see local SEO for 2016 is in that H1 tag. The next thing we're going to look at is right here, this tag that says strong and it says local SEO in 2016. That was the part where we bolded it. All right, here we're going to redirect our attention to where it says EM. Okay, that was the italicized version. It says 2016 for local SEO. Next, let's redirect our attention down to this image that we placed. Right here, after the image, it says alt equals local SEO 2016. And then going down to the last paragraph here, you can see that there's a style text decoration underline. And wrapped inside of there is 2016 local SEO. So what we've done is we've created a pattern that Google's bots are going to come in and scrape this page. And when they look at all of these patterns, the, the italicized, the bold, the alt text, the underline, the H1 tag, they're going to notice that that local SEO is throughout all of that. Now, you don't have to know how to go into the code like this, like I just did. You could simply do this right from within WordPress, just like I showed you. But I just wanted to show you how Google views your site so that you understand the reason why we're doing this. We're doing this to create a pattern. And if you do that and you spend time on this, you're going to spend a lot less time on everything else that we're going to be talking about throughout the rest of this video series. So remember, these videos are purely driven in this series based on your feedback, based on what you put in the comments. So if you have something specific you want to learn about in the next video, you need to go and put it into the comments. And remember, I'm not releasing the next video until we get 50 likes on this one. So do me a favor, hit that like button, the thumbs up, comment, let me know what you want to see in the next one. When we get to 50 likes, I'll go ahead and release the next one. Also, exclusive content coming for people on my email list, exclusive content for people on my YouTube channel. So if you're on this video from my YouTube channel, then you should hit the link in the description and sign up to my email list as well. It's essentially going to allow you to double dip and get double the content, double the goodies. If you came here from my email list, uh, you don't need to sign up again because you're already on it. Um, you should subscribe to the YouTube channel. So hit the subscribe button. Again, it's just a way to double dip and get everything out of it. That being said, if you didn't catch the last video in the series, I'll try and put a link somewhere up over here so you can click that and uh, be taken to that video once that gets put up. Other than that, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe. And let me know what you want to see next.